Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hello. We are down to Travis tonight. Uh, otherwise, we're all back for more Call of Cthulhu, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's start with Terry tonight. Hi, I'm Terry. I play as James. I am the historian. Medic. And I don't know what else there is, really. Not, not revolver, re revolver boy. <laughs> all I have are revolvers. That's all I have. Oh, I'm sorry, except for one. I did make sure I had an automatic. Just, uh, you're just walking around strapped now, huh? Oh, yeah. With how we've been going through encounters, um, yeah, I'm not going anywhere without a gun to deal with cultists. And Joey? Hey, everybody. I'm playing Connor Leon, and uh, I am the mechanic and uh, merchant. Uh, I'm, I'm the Karen now. Yeah, that's what's happening here. I, I am the merchant abuser. <laughs> Sounds about right. Bri is back with a new face. Hey. Uh, howdy, y'all. I'm Bri. I'm playing Bernadette Brandt. And uh, it was easier to set up a VTubing avatar than it was to get my regular camera working. <laughs> so. So, uh... Last week, you just met with a bit of trouble uh, in a mosque. You found out a lot of information from your uh, new contact. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Faraz. Faraz Najjar, who, uh, who told you about... Um, well, you already knew that there is a cult in town. Uh, he told you who one of the high priests is, Omar al-Shakti, a uh, uh, wealthy businessman. Uh, he also told you that there's an old wise woman in a small town a little north of Cairo who might know more about, uh, about the cult itself. Uh, he has never met the lady, but he believes that her son also worked for the uh did some work for the carlisle expedition najar also mentioned to you that he's aware the cult wants to obtain an artifact that is currently held in uh in the mosque mosque of ibn tulun Besides all of that, you still know about the uh, the Clive expedition, which is uh, has moved on from a dig near the pyramids, but is still digging in the area near Cairo. Uh, your contact at the museum told you that an archaeologist had been let go from the dig, uh, a, a man named Van Hoevelen, who he believes if you want to get information about the Clive expedition, that would be your in. You have not been to the newspaper office in Cairo. And I believe those are your current open leads. All right. Uh, you have not been back to Warren Bazaar either. The, uh, the former Carlisle agent who now lives in hiding in the back of a shop and who uh, Terry terrorized a little bit in Connor deeply terrorize the merchant whose shop he's hiding in. I didn't try to terrorize. That, well, you didn't. I tried to stay back. Um, I don't know what Connor did. Right. Oof. We're getting some feedback again, Bri. I'm not sure what's going on there. Trying to... I don't, I don't know much about Morse code, but uh, it's a lot of beeping. Uh, that, I can safely say that that is not actually me because I had my mic muted for that. Well, that's an interesting oh. article. Cool. 
Connor just dropped out. But uh, we obviously will wait to make a real decision till he's back. But what do you think you want to look up next? I still want to uh, meet up with. I don't. I know you just said the name. It's that. Uh... Describe the person. It's like... If I remember correctly, it was like an older lady that had a kid that worked. Nuri of Son? Elwasta. And yeah. An older lady named Nuri in the town of Elwasta. I'd still kind of like to uh, at least follow up on that. All right. Uh, Otherwise, a uh, newspaper, that doesn't sound too bad because there's a lot of hidden stuff there. About the rest of you. Uh, I will agree with it on the grounds that I don't know what's happening right now because I just had a technical issue. Okay. Birdie, you're also good with going to Awasta? Yep, that's fine with me. All right. Uh, you will have to talk to your, your dragoman, Ibi Musa, who... Uh, will make arrangements to get a car because this is some distance to the north uh, a few hours up the Nile uh, he'll tell you that he definitely needs to go along with you because this is a more remote location absolutely no tourists would ever go there uh, and there is unlikely to be anybody who can speak English gotcha But uh, once once he's confirmed, uh, like he doesn't, like he doesn't really get why you want to head up the river and meet an old lady in some little town. But uh, he will dash off to make arrangements for you. Within a few hours, you'll be heading north along the dusty roads in a in a fairly new car. There aren't a lot of old cars at this point in history. Connor, I assume that you're driving, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is nothing like what you're used to. Like I'm, I'm sure that in your uh, rum running days, you've driven on some nasty old country roads. Oh, we lost them. Oh, we lost them. But to the rest of you, this is this is something beyond that. What you're driving up is basically a camel track. Oh. Yeah. Why are we having tech pro? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody's been down now. Oh, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, OBS. Hello, OBS. <laughs> okay. Apparently, uh, the thing decided to remove Brian entirely on my end, and I cannot see or hear them. And I am trying to figure that out. Hmm. Well, yeah, that just happened everywhere. Technical uh, difficulties. I'm glad mine was simply just unplug it and plug it back in. <laughs> I'm glad do, do that that's all you, I need to do. Uh, do you know what this uh, program is for our ta uh, talking thing? I'm going to see if I can go into the configs and reset shit for me. Uh, well, it's it's uh, it's a live kit client running through Foundry. Oh, AV? Okay. Uh... Nope, I guess I just got to reset the defaults. Which is probably going to break everything. Oh, it's going to ruin my dice! Uh, it shouldn't do Wait, that. You should shouldn't. be able to... Yeah, you should be able to reset the defaults for just the uh, okay. just the one plugin. 
right. Hear me okay again? Let's see. Hear you. Oh, yeah. change. Can you hear Bri, Joe? Joe? Bri is not talking right now. That's right. Ba da da ba 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 ba. Still nothing. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, nothing. What the fuck? Ah! Did did he mute me? Uh, not intentionally, at any rate. <laughs> uh, I'll fight with OBS another time. <laughs> yeah, that's usually my solution. <laughs> Do it later. <sighs> uh, Joey. Mm -hmm. Do you have the option under LiveKit Client to use a separate window for AV? Uh, yes. No idea if that'll help you or not. But... And lost him again. Wait, you can go to a different window? Uh, you can have the AV... Oh, there is? I do see that. Whether that would benefit... Oh, it's experimental. Anyway. Okay. Well, everything's experimental, basically. Oh, that's... No, fun. This may not have improved Joey's situation. <laughs> okay, now I'll... Uh, okay, I can see you again, Joey. But the funny thing is, I can't, I, I can't see right now. Yeah, no, OBS crashed. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I decided Excellent. I'm gonna Excellent. fight with that another time because it obviously works better oh, than just oh, using this. native Firefox. Huh. And now I don't have any of the chat features, dice, or character stuff anymore. Well, you should have game. two separate windows. Yeah, I have two separate windows, but the game does not have the sidebar for me to type in. No okay. dice, no is character it, sheet, nothing. Is there anything on the right-hand side of the screen? Like maybe Here, I'm, I, I, will, I will take a screenshot and send it. And uh, Oh, wait. I'm getting blown up. You're going to hear some Discord sounds. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> oh. But yes, I'm going to send it through Discord, because I can't send it through anywhere else. I'm not the only one hearing the beeps, am I? Yeah, you're 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 fine. No, I'm I'm hearing it. I don't know where those beeps are coming from, but yeah, that's my game. I'm not right hearing now. it. Why do I never hear the weird audio things? I am trying a third reset and seeing what happens. Oh, you said okay. I see where you said it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Starting the show might have been a little preemptive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're a little premature there. No one was expecting technical difficulties this quick. And and, and, and the like messed up thing way. is, I can't go into the options of the game. Well, here's a question, and Joey. Change things. Can you hit refresh on the Forge tab and still keep talking to us because you have it on a different... Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I, I've refreshed three times, and it's been this way every single time. <laughs> so nice. there's no way for me to change or fix any of the settings Okay. right now. Why don't we... It's not on the other... Why don't we play... Go ahead and press forward if you can see what's on the screen at all. 
Uh, if you need to mm -hmm. roll anything, I can roll for you. Okay. Yeah, let's let, let's push for it. Let's get something done. All right. Ugh. So you will roll north along what amounts to camel paths. Uh, you're going to have to pick your way slowly along the road. Uh, but you can... Even when you have to get out and shove, shove, the, uh, shove the car back out of some sand drifts, you still realize that with the extra water you can carry in the car and the fact that you're not walking most of the time, this is still a better way to travel. Uh, nevertheless, you're going to be somewhat sweaty and worn out by the time you make it to this small village of El Wasta. Um, now, you don't have any further direction, uh, but if he will get out of the car and start asking a few people when you get into town, he'll come back and tell you, well, uh, I'm afraid... Nuri is a somewhat common name in this village. Uh, it might take us a little time to run down exactly the one you're looking for. Who has the lowest luck in the group? Connors is 55. 46. How's Birdie's luck? Let me see. Birdie's luck is 83. Ridiculous. Okay, James. So, so me. <laughs> Could you please give me a luck roll? We're going to see just how quickly yeah. we run down the right nerdy. Okay. So it is going to be pushing dusk uh. by the time the group of you have uh, made your way around all the potential why did they think that okay uh through all the potential nuries and to a small a small uh small building on the outskirts of the town Um, as you approach the small building, you can see a man working on the outside. Uh, he's carrying some jars from out outside of the house and around to the side. Uh, you can see that he's struggling a little bit because his, uh, his right arm and shoulder seem to be completely missing. So he's oh, the man has big a big burly left arm and shoulder. So he's wrapping it around these jars, picking them up and carrying them around. But uh, he's off balance. You can tell this is a struggle for him. I will try to be as much of assistance as I can. Okay. Yeah. So as you draw closer, uh, you can run up and grab one of the jars from him and he's going to look at you suspiciously for a moment but you're a, you know you're young and innocent looking <laughs> so as you start uh, you can make a few motions and let him know that you're just trying to help and um, he'll show you where to put it alright yeah uh I'm going to suggest we turn off the music for now, since Joey can't turn it down. Oh, I did not realize that was an issue. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fine. There we go. Uh, you know what, Birdie? Back in England, during that fight at the, uh, at the country estate, you were the one that kind of hung back and got a real good sense of what was going on. You kind of watched the whole field. Mm-hmm. 
the injury that this man has taken now that now that james is run up and you're all closer it's not just that his shoulder and arm are completely gone but a good deal of his face is gone uh it honestly reminds you of when the dragons were swooping down and biting people like just that amount of flesh was disappearing each time they did that Mm hmm. I'm gonna stop the others just for a second mm -hmm. and just quietly mention that to them. Just say, that looks like a dragon bite. If that's the case, it's astonishing that he's even alive. Well, we're still alive, aren't we? Yeah, but we're not missing a part of us. Or at least almost about half of us. Uh, we're going to assume... Th this man does not speak English very clearly. But we're going to assume that Ibby is translating for you so that you can just go ahead and you know, try to have a conversation here. Yeah. Fair enough. So he thanks you for helping him with his jars. Um, when you set them down, you can see that there are olives inside of uh, inside of these. It looks like right. he's still... Um, looks like he was finishing up the day's work when you arrived. Ah. Um, there's a bit of James you've been here before mm -hmm. you can see like it, it would be normal for like you just help the guy out and uh, it would be normal for him to invite you inside to have sit down and have something to eat uh, but he's hesitating you can see in his face that there's like, he has this impulse, I need to do this, but also something's holding him back. Mm. So it's, it's a little bit awkward when he uh, he's saying thank you and then not quite, uh, what, what do you need? Why are you here? But um... I will go and ask if... Um... How do you say the name again? I'm sorry. It's all right. Nuri. Nuri. Okay. Uh, if there is someone named Nuri here. Uh, yes, my mother is inside. Uh, I am inside. Um, all right. I'm... I'll introduce myself. I'm... James Reed. These are a couple of my colleagues. And uh, I have, we have some questions for you about uh, the Carlisle expedition. Hmm. Um, it's very bad. The car you don't you don't want to find out about the Carlo expedition. It's just very bad. It was they were dangerous people. It, it's good that they're gone. I I would still like to know. I will uh I kind of imagine that James would have a little bit of a pain face. Absolutely. When hearing that, and just say, uh, my parents were on that expedition. I'm, I'm very sorry. I, I did not mean that everyone involved was bad. Uh, Reed. Reed, I may have met your father. Uh, briefly. I, uh, I worked... As a, as a laborer with them I did a lot of digging 
I don't know. If, I don't know what information my mother would have for you. You can come in. She's very, very old and injured. So, if you have just a few brief questions, you can come in and ask her. But please don't. She's an old woman. She I, needs to rest. I appreciate any information I can get. So he'll lead you inside of the small house and he'll light an oil lamp in here and in the darkness you're going to see a small huddled woman sitting in the corner on a on a on a bed. Uh, yeah. And as the room lights up you can see that uh she is actually missing both of her arms. But she has um she has most of the upper arms. Uh, they just end in kind of nubs. All right. Uh, and James, when you enter the hut, with your friends behind you, she's sitting there kind of hugging herself as well as she can. She has a blanket wrapped around her. She's just kind of singing quietly to herself. But when you enter the hut and the, he lights the lamp up, she sits back and looks and her eyes light up. And she, yeah. starts, she starts making gurgling noises. And then with her arm, she's just kind of pointing over towards the opposite corner of the hut. All right. I will look at the opposite corner of the hut. So there is, uh, there are blankets and pots and other bric-a-brac stacked up there. But kind of, kind of amidst all of this is a rush basket painted with a red symbol. What kind of red symbol? That's a good question. You can give me either archaeology or occult to see if you if you recognize it at all. Uh, Connor, I don't think the either of these are your strong suit. I'll use archaeology. Oh wait, wait. Yeah, no, archaeology is not mine. <laughs> but yes, I can open my sheet now. Okay, cool. All right. I, I can open my sheet. <laughs> yeah, James, this is an ancient <laughs> Egyptian symbol of protection. I will go and I feel like just seeing it and knowing it right away, I would probably go and say, probably like widen my eye a little bit and go and say a symbol of protection. Uh, yeah, you can actually say we're going with an extreme success. You're going to know what the name of the symbol is. Now I don't cause it's not written in the book, but James does. <laughs> And all right, then I yeah, I will I will say the actual uh, the symbol, whatever. <laughs> all right, give, give me three seconds to double check what it could be. Okay. But as, <laughs> as, as the resident Egyptian enthusiast. <laughs> when you say the name of this glyph, uh, Nuri is going to become more animated, start nodding her head and pointing towards the basket. I'm going to uh, tell you to uh, grab the basket over and bring it over. Uh, well, when you go to pick it up, you find this thing is heavy. Uh, I will, and when uh... you look inside, there is a slab of stone. Which looks like this. Um, Ooh. It also has a what... strange symbol on it. It is clearly, from the irregular edges, it's clearly been broken off of a larger piece of uh, a finished stone. And the symbol is similar to the Eye of Horus uh, with 
with something else in there with it. Possibly, possibly the head of an unk. I was about to say, would I know this symbol? Uh, in combination, no. Like these are two symbols you definitely recognize, but it's just it's like just the head of an unk. And it looks similar to the Eye of Horus, but it's not its not quite the way you've seen it made before. The symbol of protection would probably be the Eye of Horus, by the way. It is apparently... Just checking it. Yeah, it's apparently something else in this case, but maybe also similar to it. All right. So when you pick up the stone, she starts, like, uh, nodding and, like, motioning for you to take it with you. I will ask, are you sure? She, um, she actually bows down in front of you when you say that. He comes back up and then again. All right. I'm I'm going to ask uh her son. How does she seem to know who we are? Uh, he looks he looks startled. He says I I'm not sure she knows who you are, but I don't know this is more animated than I've seen her in some time, so I don't know the answer. She is... Uh, very quietly through Ibi, he'll tell you that she is not in control of her faculties anymore. Looking at her, you have no way to tell how old this woman is. Um, her, injuries, <laughs> her injuries make it more difficult but also she's just she looks ancient but um, James do you are you accepting the stone I will accept it Okay, when you heft it up, hold it closer to your body, make it clear that you're taking it with you, she kind of lapses back into, like, the light that was in her eyes kind of leaves it again. And she just kind of leans back against the wall of the hut, wraps her blanket around her, and starts softly singing to herself again. What kind of song is it? Uh, a lullaby. Does it have like a... Okay. Yeah. I want to try something weird. I don't know if this this is how this would work. Okay. But, you try um, some magic stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go over to her and just very, very gently touch her and see if I can maybe use my psychometry to see what's going on with her. J just get a sense of like what is happening with her. I don't know if that's something that I can technically do with psychometry, but I think you would have a better chance of getting some impression from the stone itself. Uh, psychometry is really meant for non-living things. Okay, it's more for objects rather than... Okay. Yeah. But uh, if you want to just go give her a gentle touch, she'll respond to it. But not much more than that. Okay. Uh, by does like he looks confused by all of this he doesn't know why his mother was excited to see you and to give you this stone but he doesn't have any particular use for the stone 
<laughs> it's a rock. Yeah, like it's got nice symbols carved on it, but he doesn't really know where it came from. And um, if if you're all happy to take it with you, go for it. I will wait until we're yeah. back outside before motioning to try to do my psychometry on the stone. Okay. Uh, I guess I will go and ask the big question. To him, uh, what happened to you guys? Your, I don't feel. I, I'm not sure, but I'm not used to arms being partially gone, and this seems like it might have to do with something from the Carlisle expedition. He tells you uh, many of them were bad people. They consorted with demons, and being near them was dangerous. If I just, like, lightly scratch out a general shape of those dragon things that we saw. Okay. And, and like, just wasn't one of these. I think, I think the appropriate thing to have you roll for this is sanity. <laughs> oh because lovely you are really focusing on trying to remember something that you are better off not knowing exists okay yeah you uh <laughs> this is going to I have accepted you... it into my world view and I am not bothered by it well I think it is going to cost you one point of sanity <laughs> fair uh, because that's an extreme success. <laughs> and you have remembered yeah. this thing in great detail. But um, you will draw it with such, like, as you you bend down, you start drawing in the sand, and you kind of lose focus on what you're doing and why for a while. Like, you get drawn into really getting details. Uh, and... You'll probably hear me go and say, Freddie, are you all right? Uh, you do not hear that. You are startled back to uh, wakefulness when Ubaid stamps his foot down into the middle of your drawing. And at that point, he tells you, you've spoken to my mother. I don't know what she, why she had that for you, but um, I think it's time for you to go. I'm just going to mutter very quietly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And shake my head and like put my head in my hands and rub my temples. Oh yeah. <sighs> I will uh, turn back to him and I'll kind of bow and say thank you. I don't know what all this means but I'm sure it helps me in some way trying to uh, figure out what happened to my parents. Try to stay safe, but if you're really if you're really searching for answers here, I don't know that you can. And he's going to go back inside and shut the door behind him. All right. And I'm going to finish erasing that drawing. <laughs> Just... Might be a smart move. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is, as I said, you didn't find this place, and like you didn't find the right Nuri until about dusk. Yep. So you'll make your way back to the car. Um, you're going to have to, if you want to look at this thing, it's either going to be tomorrow or you're going to have to like stand in the headlights 
Maybe you could, maybe you, I'm sure you have flashlights with you. Maybe you could dig those out and look in the back of the car, but. I'd say after the incident with the drawing, Birdie is thinking twice about touching that thing. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Probably on the uh, car ride back, I'll be just kind of running my hands over it, trying to, I guess, feel the texture. Okay. See if it's, um, it, it's obviously it's broken off, but I want to know if it's at all like smooth. Or if it's all just rough. It is. So the face of it is very, very smooth. It's worn with age. But you can tell that at one point this was a beautiful piece of workmanship. Uh, it's Probably. Little... Go ahead. Probably uh, looking at it. I guess maybe. Well, it is either is for someone higher up or it was like some type of probably maybe from one of the pyramids maybe that's a good guess uh you got an extreme role an extreme success on the archaeology check and there wasn't a room to give you much for that particular roll, but I think I'm going to let it roll over here. You don't need to roll again to identify this thing. All right. It is limestone, which was used as facing on a lot of the pyramids. And if you dig out a flashlight and really inspect it, you're going to find that it has, um, it's not white. It's almost, it has sort of a pinkish hue. And you know that this, as a facing color, was used only on the Red Pyramid at Dashur. Ooh. I remember that uh, we heard about that pyramid. What was, what was the details on that again? Uh, let's see. Well, the Bent Pyramid is where the... Um, where the the sorcerer who is also the black pharaoh was eventually imprisoned mm -hmm. let's see so this is very important then uh now the red pyramid was also built by the same pharaoh and it was said to guard adashur to prevent Nefren Ka from rising from the dead. All right. And, um, that is about as much information as you're going to be able to pull up just knowing recorded history here. Uh, you're not sure, you don't recognize these two symbols being combined in this way. Both of them are a little bit odd for the symbols that they most closely resemble. Yeah. And you're not sure why this thing is broken why Nuri had it. Now, Birdie, you're having second thoughts, but it is up to you whether you want to try to connect with this rock. I will look at the other two. And ask them, do y'all think it's a good idea for me to try to figure out more about this thing? Connor, you might the, not the be The way entirely, that I do. You might not be entirely sure what is going on. You're driving home through the darkness trying to keep this damn thing on this basically camel path 
There's no street lights or anything. You're depending on your headlights. You got to go so slow. And they're messing around in the back with a piece of stone. I can't hear you, buddy. Joey, you're muted. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, tech problems. Yeah. We can go back to using Discord for audio if we if it would help. <laughs> yeah, so the kids are messing around in the back seat with flashlights and trying to play with their toys and dad just wants to get home. <laughs> <laughs> well i'll share what i've found out and um i feel like i've i've gotten used to you grabbing stuff and being able to figure out more to its history i would say if you really want to you can give it a shot I think I'll wait till we get back to the hotel. <laughs> Might not be a bad idea. Absolutely fair. Okay. Am I sounding foggy or like myself? You sound fine now. You sound like yourself. Okay, cool. You sound really good, man. Awesome. I was hoping that it didn't default to my laptop microphone, which has a big ass fan underneath it. <laughs> So, uh, you'll make it back to the hotel. Uh, Theodore and Victor will have been resting. Jean is going out during the day. You're not sure what he's getting up to, but so far he hasn't been arrested. Um, pretty late at night. I don't know if you want to do any more, uh, any more talking or any more looking into rocks this evening, or if you're going to pick it up tomorrow. I'd say we pick it up tomorrow, partially because I may have overestimated how much energy I had for this. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna make sure that I place that somewhere safe. That in case of say, I don't know, one of those cult members try to break in, uh -huh. they don't find it right away. Fair. I'm gonna give him a rest because he did get injured a little. and hammer does not to be, need to be on that list. I'll figure that out later. He does not recover hit points. He's dead. Uh, and the next day. Uh, no creepy calls just attack overnight. You're able to rest. Uh, and you can decide... If it's time to do more psychic investigation, or if you want to follow up on one of your other leads. Well, so far I got what I wanted. I would like to do more psychic investigation. However, can we do that next week instead? Because I am... Um... <laughs> I, 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 I am in need of going outside and screaming into the void. <laughs> <laughs> and I am still getting blown up. Okay. Yeah, we're and having technical tech issues too, so um, it's perfectly fine to wrap it up here and pick up next Sorry. week. Nope, man. Apologies. I've been there too. <laughs> The difference is when I'm having technical issues, nobody gets to play, so this is better. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, yeah. thank you all very much. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank, thank you for running and for yeah. putting up with our nonsense. Yeah. Hopefully uh, next week is better and we don't have as many uh, tech problems. Yeah. I'll be trying to figure out how to get my VTuber set up, actually. Yeah, working. your mouth flaps to be a little bit better. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Because right now it only moves on vowels, right? Yeah. And we could also talk know. about if using Discord for audio would be better or not. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. But uh, for the evening, good night, everybody. Yeah, yeah. see you. Good night. See you guys.